Uh, my name's John Stewart. I'm one of the deputy heads who has responsibility for the junior school, uh, so along with Mrs. Craig. Um, so we're going to hear a little bit from me, um, and then we'll ask some of our young people to come and give you that kind of presentation. So we're going to take you right from kind of the transition from second, third, fourth year through to um, when pupils are ready to leave at the end of uh, their time at Wood Farm. So um, really it's just to highlight those transition points and to give you a very brief overview of the national qualifications. I think it was, obviously we've got a kind of varied audience of people who have been to a number of presentations uh, already um, you know, and in the wider school as well about national qualifications. So I'll give you a few basic points about them. If you're interested, then I'll be also giving you information about where you could go for further detail on that. Um, the Curriculum for Excellence, as most of you will probably know, is a framework which covers 3 to 18, um, and really obviously just joining up the, the dots so that pupils have an experience which gives that element of con continuity right through their school career. Um, obviously there's lots of important points of transition. Uh, from a secondary school perspective, primary 7 to S1 is clearly significant. Um, this presentation focuses more on the second two that are up there, which is the broad general education stage into the senior phase and then um, taking forward into uh, looking at the post-school transition phase and, and what pupils can expect in terms of support uh, to go forward for that. Uh, S3 is a, um, a kind of a key point for transition because it is looking at uh, the opportunities for pupils to start to be a bit more specialised and to consider their options. And you come, boys, if you want to listen. Um, we are really taking pupils from uh, the broad general education phase through uh, to start selecting a pathway which will take them forward uh, into national qualifications. They'll start in S3 to undertake elements of national qualifications as and when it's kind of appropriate and works for them. So it's, it's, it's a year of transition the whole year uh, in that sense. And some pupils will be working faster than others, obviously, so depending on the group that they're working in, they might start work on national qualification material quite early in third year, or it might be that the majority of third year will be uh, consolidating the learning from the broad general education. This is a, a, just a very brief slide. For those of you who aren't familiar with uh, recent updates in Scottish uh, qualifications, uh, really now, you may have been in the past familiar with standard grade or um, for East Renfrewshire, we've been working with intermediate one and two instead of standard grade for quite some time. Uh, the new national qualifications replace uh, these uh, old examinations and our current fourth years are the first cohort in East Renfrewshire who will be presented for the new national qualifications. So again, if you're interested in, in knowing more about that, then the best thing to do is to have a look at uh, SQA website and the Parent Zone website, which I'll point you to at the end of the presentation. Um, but really, you'll see that in terms of levels of performance and in levels of examination available, that hasn't changed. Uh, what's changed is just streamlining that system to ensure that these examinations build on the, the skills, priorities for Curriculum for Excellence. We're now going to ask some of our pupils to, to come forward and to tell you a little about, about their experience. This is the year group who have um, come through this new set of uh, working and they are preparing themselves for their new national qualifications in S4. So we thought that uh, rather than hearing me droning on, uh, they would tell it better and to tell it like it is. So we'll pass over first of all to James and Stuart. Thank you. When you move on to the national qualifications, you will die a very slow and very painful death of exams, revision, and homework. That's pretty much the assumption made by every terrified new third year as they enter Wood Farm after their lovely summer holiday. James and I are in third, fourth year, fourth year, as most of you that can read can see above. Uh, and that gives the idea that we have survived third year. And we are here to assure, assure we are here to assure you one simple fact. Third year does not follow that stereotype. Uh, in third year, we were given support whenever we needed it by class teachers, support teachers, and year heads. Supported study was provided regularly 
either one-on-one -on -one with our teachers or group provision after school. Our year group will be the first to set the new national qualifications in May. So when we're entering the deep dark cave that is third year, we weren't really sure what was going to lie ahead. And it would have been really helpful to have some smart fourth years like us tell us what it would be like. The national qualifications all starts off with the choice of your pathway. The choices maintain progression in all areas, maths, English, French and PE being the subjects that you are required to help keep progression in numeracy, literacy, languages and running, down, running around the football pitch because you forgot your PE, I mean um, health and well-being. Um, you can then expand to the creative subjects, sciences, social subjects and ICT depending on your skill sets and the type of career that you want to pursue. But, oh no, you just picked art and you realise that you struggle to draw a stick man. Don't worry, because there is still flexibility throughout third year. If you realise you regret picking something, you can talk to your support teacher and try to get it changed to an appropriate subject. Uh, this gives us a lot more freedom compared to the last few years we spent at Wood Farm. Um, with, and with great freedom comes great responsibility. Well, I think that's how the quote goes. But this year, you're going to need to start working a lot harder because we need, we're starting learning the knowledge we need for an, our exams. Although it kind of seemed like ages away, um, the exam that we're going to set has already been written. It's being bodyguarded with maximum security in a warehouse somewhere with armed guards and lasers. So um, we, need to get, we need to stop procrastinating and start working now. Even 20 minutes a day aside from homework will greatly benefit you. In Wood Farm, we are encouraged to keep records of our achievements in our planners, and we are also asked them to write them down in PSAT and at the start and the end of the year, which help us improve our work and increase our confidence. Also, what you achieve in school or outside school help us contribute in our houses. House system was introduced in 2013. There are four houses, Tyree, Cumbria, Butte, and Aaron. Your individual and group achievement help decide which house is the winner at the end of the year. You also get awards for your elective course like dance, sports and coaching, and Duke of Edinburgh. For Duke of Edinburgh, you get bronze award and for leader award for dance and sports and coaching. Also, you record your achievements in your e-portfolio, which when you get, want to get a job, it put, get put in your CV, which helps you get employed. Um, I'm going to be talking about the elective course. The elective course is when a pupil chooses one of the three options, Duke of Edinburgh Dance or Sports Coaching. They will study this option for a year. The Duke of Edinburgh Sports Coaching class is earning an award at the end of the year for their hard work and dedication. The dance elective has an opportunity to become a dance leader. All pupils benefit from their electives as they gain skills that they can use throughout their lives. The electives are good for employability as it goes in their CV. Pupils enjoy elective, electives as it is one of the parts of their education that they get a say in. Most people feel motivated to take part as they choose an elective that is suited to them, which also encourages them to reach their full potential. I'll now pass on to Megan to talk about support. The start of third year can be quite a daunting time for pupils. However, there are a variety of support options available to pupils to ensure that they cope with various situations. Having been through it, we realise there was very, actually, very, li very little to worry about, and it was a successful transition. One example of support study where pupils can get the opportunity to attend a support study group, either at lunchtime or after school. It is a fantastic service as it enables pupils to get help if they are struggling, falling behind, or unsure of a certain topic or issue. Within a subject, as they have the benefit of a staff member at hand to talk to. It is a great tool to have and can really make a difference to a pupil's understanding and knowledge of their subject. The Sport and Study timetable is on the school website. S3 pupils are welcome to attend S4 sport study classes. In S3 and S4, the progress of all pupils is monitored and tracked to ensure that an individual is on course to fulfil their own potential. If a pupil is identified as falling behind in terms of potential success, support can be offered through mentoring by a member of staff. A partial support member of staff is available to offer advice on support on personal, curricular or vocational issues through all stages of secondary school. I'll now hand you over to Owen who will talk about ePortfolio. 
Yes, it's time to talk about that thing that all pupils love getting taken out of PE for and spend so many hours trying to figure out how they work. It's e-portfolios. Now, I know that not everyone enjoys them, but they're actually quite important. They're basically a giant CV of everything you've done. So it's vital that you write everything good you do down there, whether that be getting full marks in a math test or staying awake for a full period of French. Now, those of you who are sitting there who have absolutely no idea what I'm talking about, I'll explain what they are. An e-portfolio is exactly what it sounds like. It's a portfolio that's online. It keeps a record of everything you've done, all your achievements in and out of school and your targets for the future. And they're all arranged in sections that work like hashtags. So, as an example, say you get 100 in the bleep test, you would log onto GLOW. GLOW is the educational website we use to keep in touch with teachers and where we keep our e-portfolios. You would write a new post there with the information in it and then tag it health and wellbeing. Simple. Then it goes on your e-portfolio that can be viewed by teachers, parents, and potential employers, but not other pupils. Thank you, and I think I'm going to hand over to John who will talk about the case. Um, good evening, my name is Peter Williams, and I'm here to talk about the vocational option that is offered to fifth years. Uh, I was struggling with my choices going into fifth year. I'd already had four hires already up my sleeve, um, but I was, wasn't sure I was going to take my fifth option. In that assembly, one morning, um, the school presented the PowerPoint about um, vocational, which is a college course outside the school. You're still in school, but it's a college course you're doing. Uh, I was really surprised by the wide variety of courses that were being offered. There was anything from construction to hairdressing to sound production, which is the course I'm currently doing. I'm doing it at Riverside Studios, which is one of the best music studios in the whole of Scotland. I'm doing it two, two afternoons a week on a Tuesday and Wednesday. Um, one of my concerns was transport, how I was going to get there. It's in Busby. Uh, I was concerned how I was going to get there and back, but then I found out the school arranges transport. They either arrange a taxi or a bus to come get you. Um, also to bring you back and they drop you off at the school. Uh, there is an interview process for the vacation courses. As there, um, there is a limited number of places. However, there is a reservation list, list, so if you don't get in first time through an interview, other schools that don't use up their places will hand those places down to other schools. So if you don't get in first time, you don't need to worry because you might you got a chance of still going to it. Uh, I think it's a really good stepping stone for future goals as it brings you that one step closer to further education or getting your degree. And I'd really recommend it as it's made my fifth year a lot better. It's made it a lot more fun and it's a lot more grown up because it's college and it's a better taste of further education because it's preparing you for um, the organisation skills and more responsibility that you're going to have in college. So I'd really recommend it and it's definitely... It's definitely not a sky. A lot of people might think it's an easy option, but I'm telling you, it's quite hard work. It is college after all, so thank you. Hi there, I'm Sophie Gibson, and I'm currently a six-year pupil here at Wood Farm. Um, this evening, I'm going to briefly talk to you about the process from transition from fifth to sixth year and also the UCAS process. Um, this stands for University and Colleges Admission Service, um, and the school offers you a wide range of support through this certain process. Um, they also support you through um, no matter what you want to do after school, whether it be employment, further education, or higher education. So UCAS is basically an application tool that helps you apply to higher education. It sends your profile off to chosen universities via their website. The site explains the different application routes and the application process via a personal login system. It's really accessible with easy to understand information and video guides. For me, the process is of preparing to, to enter higher education starting in S4 when I started logging my experiences in the school and community for my personal statement. This for me was really helpful and important to help construct a detailed statement. Now pupils have the added benefit of the e-portfolio previously mentioned. The school not only supported me in S4 and PSE, but also offered a range of extracurricular activities, for example, coaching, saltire awards, mentoring, and prefect duties. In S5, I was provided with numerous opportunities to help me explore the different career paths including a careers evening where I went along with my parents and visited a variety of stalls and representatives from universities, colleges, funding and modern apprenticeships. This gave me an opportunity to pick up prospectuses, speak to universities about courses and open days. 
It made me aware of what subjects I could be taking and the extracurricular activities that go alongside. In PSE classes with our guidance teacher, we visited and signed up to sites such as My World of Work and Work It, Planet Plus as well. I could arrange meetings with my guidance teacher if I felt I was unsure of what I wanted to do. There is also an opportunity for one-on-one -on -one meetings available with the careers advisor to help focus your thoughts. The school has a great tracking and monitoring programme in place to keep pupils and their teachers updated on progress and what areas of the curriculum required extra work. I found it really helpful reading the range of universities' prospectuses found in the school library. There is a huge variety of different courses on offer, some of which I didn't even know existed. The nest, alongside the necessary work experience and entry requirements that universities require. I would also really encourage going to appropriate open days in both fifth and sixth year, because it's a great opportunity to speak to admission staff, lecturers, current students, and attend many lectures about different courses. This all helps you get a flavour of university. Early on in sixth year, the school organised a UCAS information evening. The university admission officers explained the application process and funding. The process was well in its way. A year group assembly outlining the role of UCAS online and the members of staff available su for support. The staff included senior management, guidance staff, faculty heads and class teachers from each department. We were recommended to choose a member of staff who knows us well since the report had to be submitted by them to the university. This mentor supports you through the application process and establishes deadlines for personal statement. They also give you advice on how to improve the quality of your statement. It's only allowed to be 4,000 characters with spaces at roughly three quarters of an A4 page. And this can be a huge challenge. So as well as a mentor helping you with personal statement, finalising choices and regularly checking your progress, they also collate a reference from a small report from each of your teachers of that year. Throughout the whole process, meeting deadlines is probably one of the most important aspects. I've just sent off my application and during the, the whole process, I felt really supported by my mentor and the school. We could regularly update each other with the progress made and there is someone available to talk to about my worries and concerns. Thank you. So hopefully uh, that gave you a kind of whistle-stop tour of uh, the pr progression from second year through third year and uh, beyond school. Um, obviously, depending on your individual interests and stages, you might well wish to um, explore some of those things further. So I've just uh, put up a couple of suggestions about where you could uh, get more information. Um, probably the best one, in a sense, is Parent Zone website. Um, which you can obviously uh, use a search engine to locate and it will take you to links to Education Scotland or SQA um, to give you more information uh, about qualifications or, or, or your area of interest. Uh, there's a particularly good series of publications called Nationals in a Nutshell um, which give you information about the new national qualifications for each subject. Um, so if you're, if you're wanting a bit more information, obviously talk to staff here tonight um, in the, the foyer area, um, but you can certainly have a look at uh, these websites as well, um, and it gives you information about preparing for exams, revision aids, etc. So really that concludes our presentation this evening um, on the transition process. So uh, I'd like to thank our presenters, uh, thank you once again, and thank you our audience for giving up your time, and hopefully you'll enjoy the rest of your, your evening. <laughs>